Hi guys, in this video, I will go through on modeling mass spring and damper elements. So basically in vibration analysis, we have three main steps. The first one is mathematical modeling. The second one is derivations of equations. The third one is the solutions of the equations and followed by the analysis. So we will discuss the very first step of the analysis, which is the mathematical modeling. Mathematical modeling here means if we have a vibrating system, how we can represent that system into mass, spring, and damper elements. So let's see an example of a rotating engine on a rigid foundation. And we have this engine rested on a flexible rubber or a rubber pad. So the question is how we can model this system into mass, spring, and damper elements. First, we can assume that the whole body of these machines vibrate vertically, say with displacement x. So you can imagine now, this machine is it's like a bunch of mass going up and down. So and therefore, we can model this machine as a mass. So let, let me draw this one here. So the mass is m kilogram and the displacement is x. So next one, we have to identify what is the element of spring in this system. We know that we have a flexible rubber pad here between the engine and the foundations, and this rubber pad is suppressed and stretched when the, when the engine is vibrating. So the motion behavior of this pad is like a spring. So we can model this rubber as a spring element say with stiffness constant k. So this rubber itself has property of damping, which absorbs some of the vibration energy. So it acts as a damper at the same time. So we can model this rubber as a damper element, say with damping constant c. Because we assume that the rigid foundations to be fixed on the ground, so therefore, we can put rigid connections to the model. So you see, we require a bit of engineering judgment here when modeling the system into mass, spring, and damper element. So in this case, we assume that the engine only vibrates in vertical directions, but in reality, we might have vibrations horizontal and axial as well. But if from measurements we know that the vibration in the vertical direction is dominant, then we can ignore the vibrations in other directions. In other words, it is sufficient to model the systems with vertical vibrations only. Now if we know that the, this ground is a soft soil, then this rigid foundation is also moving relative to the engine. Say with this assessment XF, Therefore, we can model this rigid foundation as a mass. So let me draw the model here. So this is the mass of the engine. This is a spring and damper element from the rubber pad. So now we have the second mass, which is attached to that spring and this damping element, which is the mass of the rigid foundations. Say with capital M kilogram. Now, because the ground is a soft soil, so we can model this soil to have a stiffness property. So we can, we can model the, the soil as a spring, say with stiffness constant Ks. At the same time, it has a damping property, say with damping constant Cs. Okay? So displacement of the engine is x, and displacement of the rigid foundations is xf. You see that by assuming the soil is a soft soil, we now have a bit more complex system compared to the previous one, where the previous one, we have only one coordinate to explain the behavior of the system, 
So across the frequency, we deal only with the displacements of this mass. Okay? Now we have two independent coordinates belong to the engine and to the foundations. So at very low frequency, we have the engine and the foundations to move together in phase, but at high frequency, they move together out of phase. So let's see another example of an electric motor rigidly attached on the beam structure. So which one is the elements of mass and which one is the elements of spring and damper in this model? So note that the beam structure here is a flexible beam. So we can imagine that this, this electric motor is moving up and down on this beam, say with displacement x. At very low frequency, the beam can have this kind of deflection. Okay? And this deflection is caused by the flexible property of the beam. So we can straightforward draw the model here, where this one is the mass of the electric motor, and this one is the stiffness property of the beam structure. So the beam structure, either it's made from aluminium or mild steel, has its own damping. So we call it inherent damping. Inherent damping. It is usually quite small unless damping treatment is applied on this beam structure. Some damping is also provided by the edge conditions of the beam here. Okay, so this is how the beam is connected to the wall, for example, or how the beam is connected to the other structure. So then we can add damper element here in this model. There are two things that we should take note here. The first one, that the value of this stiffness is the stiffness at this mid-bay of the beam, okay? Because the motor is located at these locations. If the electric motor is located somewhere else on the beam, let's say, for example, here, so then we'd have to take the value of the stiffness at this location. And remember, the value of the stiffness also depends on the edge conditions of, of the beam. The second one is that the beam here has its own mass. So if the mass of the beam is comparable with the mass of the electric motor, so then we have to include this mass in this model here. However, not the total mass of the beam is vibrating, but only some portions of the mass around this area. So we call it effective mass of the beam. And don't forget to put the displacement here. So finally, we have the mass spring damper element model of this vibrating system. Okay, so that is the overview on how to build up the mathematical model of a vibrating system. Hope it is useful and see you in the next video.